Wow, more sheep. Because we have so much outdoor space in Norway. It's very common to have some sort of cabin. It's like pioneer architecture in the US, huh? cabin can be quite or re relatively cheap because we have so much space that the prices aren't too bad. Crazy the house is like so modern and then also it has a sod roof. Awesome. Why are we following that girl and that boy? Why? We're following them to the camp or to the cabin. Camp? Oh, I don't want to. No, not camp. It's a, lot. it's a cabin. Oh. They, they built the cabin. They built it? Yeah. Is it pretty? I think it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be one of these, Ness. It's right on the road somewhere. Mom, we are just going to see Yeah, I'm glad we're following them. Vegetation tells us that it snows here. It stays all winter. There we go. It's got to be right here. They're turning. I think, Bobby, I think it's here. Yeah, here it is. They have to take the, the chain off, though. Oh, wait, park here? Maybe we park here. <laughs> hey, mom, mommy. Uh-oh, we're gonna have to go over that. You gonna walk over it? <coughs> we call ourselves the cabin group. The university in Trondheim has an own sports club. And we are normally around 15 people who are like in the board of the group. The board is responsible for maintaining all of the 23 cabins we have. This cabin is probably almost 200 years old. This would be a typical summer farmhouse, so you can take care of your sheep or whatever animals they had. The cabin is owned by the um, township and we are leasing it for a 20 year period. When we signed that contract, they gave us uh, quite clear restrictions that we had to like keep the appearance uh, as it was. The outside is pretty much the same as it was 50 or maybe 200 years ago. But no electric, just all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Some simple lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> but still, with a stove and wood, you can get pretty far, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of this is for you. Uh, oh, just great. put it in because we don't know where it's. Oh, yeah. But oh, look at these little beds. I want that one there. Of high? <laughs> yeah. Let's see that. Are there two rooms or one? Uh, yeah, there's a uh, one in here. This is sort of the living room. Okay. Yeah. With two bunks as well. It's warm in here. The logs here keep the heat for a while. If you can oh, do they really? Yeah. So like a heat sink? Yeah, sort of. Wow. So you have you brought gas in here? Uh, for most of our cabins, we have this small, you know, premises. Uh, like a type of burner? Yeah. yeah. But for the larger cabins, like this one, we find it more practical to have gas. And also it's quite close to the road, so you can easily replace it without having to carry it far. The cabins are open to anyone who wants to come stay? And... There's a sports club associated with a local university. So if you're a member there, you can book any cabin you like, uh -huh. more or less for free. Yeah. So you went and got water. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like that experience? I mean, like the idea that you have to get everything yourself when you're out here? Yeah, absolutely. I like the simple lifestyle, man. You just get out of the city and think about something completely different than regular life. And then, where are you? Eight. Six. How old are you? Three. I'm or something. The Norwegian cabin tradition. The cabin tradition is very long. I would almost say most families have a cabin within the family. Rice? Yes? 
which you visit during the weekends, during the holidays, maybe celebrate Christmas there. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Oops, there you go. She'll eat a lot. Um. I think the most common thing is to have a cabin which is a bit simple. Like simple living, where you don't have uh, electricity and uh, maybe not water. That's maybe the most common thing, but you co of course have this cabins close to ski hills where it's more like ski and ski out uh, after ski. Um, but this is definitely not that type. <laughs> Honestly, hmm. I think up here. Me too. What? No, I want my own. Up here. Nobody can be up with me. Oh, sorry. All right. Well, bye. It's sometimes like a home, just in the forest or in the mountains. Because of the harsh winters we have in Norway, the farms keep their uh, animals indoor in winter time. But in summertime, they let them out in the fields to graze. And then you would have a farmhouse like this, uh, where you can stay close to the animals and uh, take care of them. Yeah. We also have a refrigerator for food over here. Yeah, so we all wrap it in, but it's cheese and ham and stuff you want to keep cool. Norwegian brown cheese. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Butter. It's not for the wheat pole, but around 13 maybe, so colder than if you keep it inside. So you can just get water right out of the creek? Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's uh, moving water, it's fine to drink. We tried to dig a hole for bathing here. <laughs> so, you dug this? Yeah, or just like we moved some of the big rocks over there to just uh, try to get a bit higher water level. The water is coming from the lakes up in the mountains, so it's a lot of melting snow coming. So that keeps the water cool for <laughs> quite some time. In the winter times, maybe you have to dig a hole through the ice some places to get to the water, but here we have a river quite close to the cabin, so it's not a hassle at all. It's an experience as well, and you often have time to do stuff like that when you're out here on the cabin without TV and uh, other Uh, old cabin. It had been empty for um, 50 years at least. In the main room here uh, it was magazines from the 1960s just lying around. It was very clear that nobody had been using the cabin for many, many years. The building period was a uh, 16 days period. So for the 16 days we were like between 10 and 20 people here uh, at the same time. When we started this construction bridge that we crossed just two kilometers up mm -hmm. here, was damaged due to a flood, so we weren't able to drive past it. So we had to carry materials. It was a bit of extra work, but mm -hmm. we managed. 
we started building. There was a tin plated roof. What was interesting was that we, uh, when we removed the tin plates on the roof, we found that underneath there was, uh, yeah, now it was just dirt, but it had been a turfed roof back in the days as well. So that's the original roof that we uh, restored when uh, making a turfed roof here. Did uh, everything ourselves. Uh, the turf for the roof we bought because you have to get the right kind of turf and also it would take way too long for us to do it manually to dig it out. For some cabins we just take it from the area around but it's a lot of work and it doesn't tend to be as nice. This is bark from the woods around here. We just cut off some pieces, wrap it out like that. We haven't done anything with this roof uh, during the four uh, years we have had it, but um, on other cabins we often go dig for this grass like this. Uh, but then you get all these trees and bushes growing there after a short while. So this time we chose to, <laughs> to buy the grass. Yeah, and it worked out really good so far. <laughs> Is this just very traditional? Yeah, it's typical for this area. It could be back in the days, it was the best way for insulation purposes. Yeah, it's nice. It fits so well into the in the nature. I mean, yeah. it... Yeah, I was surprised to see it like this as well. It Last starts. time I was here, it was just the squares still on the roof. What's the name on there? Vekve Satra. All of the farmhouses around here would be named something Satra. That's a term for an old farmhouse, but the first part would be the local name, so the Vekve Satra. Okay. Originally, this was two separate areas, one for people staying in and one small farmhouse with just a roof in between, uninsulated. First thing we did here, we had to remove all the rocks that were on the floor. So when they were done removing them, you see some of them became the steps. And also, some uh, are used for the foundations of this woodshed. Yeah, I noticed that the foundation is not wood. It looks yeah. Like, right? If it was wood, it would rot. So, so you raise it a bit? Yeah. And you can see the age has taken its toll on some of the logs here. You can fit your hand into here, more or less. It's a very dry area, even though it's very cold in winter. It's very dry, and that makes it easier for the wood to last for long. All the logs uh, in the main structure uh, are uh, original ones, and you can even see that they all sort of fit together. No one of them really stand out. Some place we found 1821 carved into a beam, and that's how we know that the cabin is probably almost 200 years old. It's probably treated or no? No, yeah, it's not treated in any way. That's just pure wood. That's the beauty of it. The foundations were there, we just filled in the holes in the foundations and then we changed the rest of it. We changed the windows, the floors. So really inside, that's why it's so warm. <laughs> when we started building, there were some boards on the walls. They had covered all these beautiful logs for some strange reason, so we <laughs> <laughs> removed that and kept the original style. Inside it wasn't that complex. We had to build the floor with insulation, build the walls, the beds that you see here, they were already standing here. We made two levels out of them. In that bedroom, that was a quite complex design process uh, in order to be able to fit as many beds as possible into there without yeah. it being too crowded. Because it sleeps how many? In that little, um, bedroom, you get to have 18 people plus two in the living room, so the cabin can fit 20 people. So the cabin group was started in uh, 1947, uh, and then with just uh, one cabin. And during those years, um, yeah, it went from one cabin to 23 cabins, and many of them are made from scratch by students. And you're able to maintain, and you're able to build cabins. I mean, so there's obviously nobody has experience, I mean, you're all students, so you're able to rebuild and build cabins. There's no kind of experienced builder that comes with you and does it. And 
Not really. Uh, some have some experience from earlier before they started studying, but it's mainly just learning by doing. Well, the latest one we built is quite modern. We had an engineering student who was just uh, graduating from um, civil engineering. So he was, wow, he had a lot of knowledge <laughs> on the stuff, Great. yeah. To do everything like structural work and the foundation. And like, yeah, yeah, we did the whole thing. We added this window on, on this end to get some more light. And in order to do that, we had to uh, add this structural support here just to make sure the logs didn't collapse. And when you gather 20 engineering students, you, people come up with a lot of ideas. I guess the challenge is to uh, separate the good ones from the bad ones. <laughs> the table and the benches here uh, we built. So you made this furniture? This looks like you'd need some knowledge of carpentry. The construction technique for those is actually relatively common. The construction techniques are quite similar to what they saw, what they used back in the days. Oh. Using the pieces of wood to hold everything together. It's a typical cabin construction technique. It's nothing you would use at home today. It's very important for us that everything we build here is quite robust because it's going to be used by so many people that might not be that attached to it. And we will want it to last as long as possible. So this table you can easily dance on if you like to. <laughs> I like doing construction work like this. And parts of what we learn here you will surely use. Uh, you might not build your own cabin, but uh, doing maintenance work at home. All the Norwegian houses are uh, wood. That's combined the wood shed and toilet. Okay. That's only built four years ago, but we tried to uh, build it in the same style as the cabin. There was nothing here before. The only thing that is old here is the door for the woodshed. That's the original back door from the kitchen on the main house. And you can see here, here's 1878 carved into the door. The chicken potty. What are you talking about? Chicken potty. It's a chicken potty, that one. And I tried to have chicken potty. Where do you see the chicken? It smells like chicken, he thinks, the potty. <laughs> this wood and some basic tools and equipment. So you use a lot of that for heating in the winter? Yeah, you would have to, even in summertime. Oh, even in summer? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you chop wood? Yeah. You all know how to chop wood? Yeah. Well. Actually, you see the wood for the cabins. You should be able to see it from around here somewhere. The trees are cut down by volunteers and just placed in wood piles. Oh, it's back here somewhere. I saw it yesterday. Yeah, there's a large pile of wood. It's you see it? There. Yeah, you can just see it between yeah, the trees there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's just firewood. <gasps> then everyone using the cabin has to uh, chop it into smaller pieces. You try not to uh, take uh, all trees in one, one area, but to spread it out so it's not that visible. And also, it has to be done in a certain manner just to yeah, make sure the area still looks nice. If you have a look at the map here, you can see some of our cabins in the area here. This is where we are now. But you also have one here up in the mountains. That's in a national park, actually, or close to it at the least. In summertime, you would have to walk from here, follow this path to the cabin. In wintertime, you would have to start even further back. It's around here all the way. So that's a fair bit. That would be a four hour walk in summertime, seven hour uh, ski trip in wintertime. That's crazy. So then you have two others, it looks like, on this map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one up. You can't even see it in the map. It's about 40 kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. Me and a couple of friends from the cabin group did that walk once. That took 16 hours. So. <laughs> you did it a day? Yeah, it's quite intense and it's not something you do very often. But it can be done.
back in the days. The cabin group dates back to 1947 and in 1950, I think it was, we had only two cabins. And if you wanted to walk between any cabins, you basically had no choice but uh, that single route. And that's really long distance. It has been done in less than 12 hours, but most people use 20 or 24 hours. When I say most people, not a lot of people do it, but it's a thing to do for healthy people, healthy, crazy people. <laughs> You're freezing! <laughs> I guess the idea is not to be too comfortable, right? Yeah. Like, that's the cabin experience? <laughs> you don't typically have long baths around here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> and I'm not even more clean than I was. <laughs> Just full of sand. <laughs> You get the sense of the circulation of your legs once you're in. <laughs> Is it that cold? Okay. I, it's it's cold. The yeah, shower at home is cold. <laughs> this, it would be terrible, but uh, here it's just refreshing. Yeah. And this water is also perfectly safe to drink. You often have time to do stuff like that when you're out here on the cabin without what is now basic stuff like TV and uh, you have to get out there. When I have the opportunity. Uh, like I have here, I have to just take it because it's so beautiful here. Yeah.